I'm going to change my home network setup so you don't have to. I've been using a Unify setup for a little while now and I want to give it a change and I'm going to give TP-Link a try. This is the Amada system. It is a direct competitor to Unify so I want to see how it gets along and how, and how easy it is to set up. In this video we're going to take a look at these boxes, what comes inside them and have a quick look at the overview system and settings. I am going to have another video coming soon where I compare the two brands to see how they get go head to head. So if that's something you want to see be sure to hit that subscribe button and do comment down below if there's something specific you want to see. The links to all these products are down in the description below so if you want to check them out they are down there as well. First thing you would want to look at is the controller itself. So this is the Amada controller which runs the software to manage all these devices in front of us. Now this is also available in a software version as well so this isn't a must, this is just something if you want hardware then this is the piece for you. Next we have the Gigabit VPN router, now there are a few different models available in these. The one I have here in front of me is a Gigabit router which can have up to 3 WAN ports and 4 Gigabit ports. Now that, that is split, there's only 5 ports in total and 1 SFP port but that basically allows you to split between the two. We'll have a look at that shortly. Next is the Jetstream 8 port 2.5 gigabit switch. So all these ports are 2.5 gigabit and we have two 10 gigabit SFP plus ports on this as well. So another powerful switch. This does work at a gigabit as well. So just because just it says 2.5 gig doesn't mean it won't work at a gig as well. So keep that one in mind. All the speeds are increasing nowadays. So it'll be good to get that high capacity speed switch. Then we have two wireless access points. We have the AX3600 and the AX3000, both Wi-Fi 6, except the only difference is this is a gigabit and this is 2.5 gig. So this actually connects to 2.5 gig to this switch, as I mentioned earlier. With these two models, obviously the bigger one, you're gonna get yourself a slightly bigger coverage because it has four internal antennas for each spectrum and this has two internal antennas. Next, we have the AC1200, which is the indoor-outdoor access point. So this can be used as it says both indoor and outdoor so we'll get that connected up and see what happens with this as well that's all the hardware we have here today so i'm going to quickly go through now and get it all connected up and show you how to get it all working together now i have everything unboxed and laid out in front of me i can show you how quickly to connect it all up it's really an easy and simple to do just to show you the boxes inside them they do come with all the mounts and everything you need to get them mounted and this one at the bottom, the switch does come with a rack ears as well. So you can get that racked in a cabinet as well. Now, just to show you what these three individual devices are, you have the switch at the bottom, as I just mentioned. This is the management controller. So this is the small little device that runs it. There is a USB power on the back of it, but what I'm actually gonna do is connect it up via PoE. You then have your TP-Link gigabit router. So as I mentioned, you've got the SFP WAN just here. You've got a single WAN, WAN, LAN, WAN, LAN, LAN and LAN. So you can use up to three WAN connections. We'll have a look in the software to see if that is any capability of that in there. Uh, and you can also turn these into four LAN ports as well. So how we're going to do this, we're going to go ahead and connect the internet connection into the router. So let's start off by doing that. So this goes straight into the first WAN port, which is just here. We're then going to plug our router into the switch and you can connect it up to port one on the switch itself. Now what this means is obviously your internet connection, you can think of it as a long pipe really, your internet connection coming in, going into your switch and then anything plugged into here will also get an internet connection. We're also gonna plug these three devices straight into the switch down here and the cloud controller will also go into the switch. Just to show you on the back of the access point, you do have DC power if you don't have a PoE switch. So it does come with the plug so you can plug that in and get power into it. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and plug the ethernet cable in there. For the indoor outdoor access point, there's a little bit that comes off here. So you can actually pop your cable through here and plug that in. That keeps your cable a little bit protected against the weather. So water can't go upwards. So when you are mounting this, I would suggest you mount it this way. And finally, we plug the large access point in. So this one's actually fairly big. And as I mentioned, this is the two and a half gig one. So we'll make sure that that is running at two and a half gig. Now this may look like a bit of a maze at the moment, but as I mentioned to you, we have everything plugged into the switch and we have one cable going from the switch to the router. And then we have our internet connection coming in. So let's go ahead and get this all powered up. First impression, that switch fan is quite loud. I'm sure you can hear that. But these two are both fanless, so I'm hoping you can still hear me over this fan. But these two are both fanless, so they are gonna get fairly warm, I'd imagine. So make sure you keep plenty of ventilation wherever you keep these. 
Let's go ahead over to the computer and have a look at how the interface looks and how we get it set up. So we're now logged into the Amada controller. I've got the IP address and let's see how easy this is to set up. So we just go ahead and click let's get started. And you can see just below, you can choose the type of business you are straight away, but at the top, let's set a controller name. So let's call this inside wire. Uh, we're not based in the United States. So, and the time, we will change it to the London time. So I'm actually set this up at home, so we're gonna go ahead and click home, or you can choose whichever one you want. I'm not quite sure what differences this makes, except at the top it says we'll select the application scenario and they'll optimize some parameters depending on how you're set up. So not quite sure what the differences are between them, but we'll go ahead and click next. We have a bunch of devices that it's already located, but it's already found all the devices. So this is the gateway, the outdoor access point, the two Wi-Fi access points, and the controller itself, and the switch. But we're gonna go. We're not gonna adopt these just yet. So we'll come back to that shortly. We'll click skip. Um, if you want to change any WAN settings specifically, now's this point. But again, we're gonna skip this for now because I want to have a look at the overview. Uh, we'll configure a Wi-Fi shortly, and there is the option for the guest Wi-Fi, which is a good point just there. And controller access. So let's give it a username and password. So we'll go inside wire. Now, if you want to enable the Omada Cloud service to be able to log in anywhere you can go ahead and put this in just here. So you type in a TP-Link ID. So there we go, we've gone in, logged in, and we've bound it to our email address. Uh, you can join the program, but I don't wanna do that. We're just gonna click next. And there we go, that is set up as simple as that. So it shows you the details just there. Click finish. So here it just gives you a quick overview of the system and how to get around and work the interface. We just click the little X in the top right-hand corner. And here we are. So let's have a little quick look at the overview. So here is the dashboard and it shows you what's connected at the top here, how many devices there are, um, and any associated failures. You have your profile in the top right hand corner, so if you wanna make any changes just there. Uh, your preferences and your sites. So you can have multiple sites here and you have a hotspot manager. I'm guessing that's gonna be for your guest network. So we have the stats. We have a map, there's no map just here just yet because there's no devices. But if we go ahead first and click on devices, you can see these are all pending adoption. Now to adopt them, you just go ahead and click the arrow at the top and we'll go ahead and give that a few minutes and let them adopt in the background. So now we have the devices adopted, we can go ahead and click on them and you can see down the right hand side, you get a, a list of information about it, what's connected, what's not connected, uh, that was the gateway, this is the switch, so we can configure ports on here, the clients, config. This does give you a very much, if you're coming from a Unify ecosystem, just like using the same system, maybe just a little bit different, but in terms of the general setup, it's exactly the same. We then have a look at the client, so you can go ahead and see what's connected. I have my MacBook Pro connected, and we have some statistics down here, uh, the history and whatever config we have set up on there, so if you have any limits, um, you can go ahead and set this up here for specific devices or networks as well. We have the insights, which gives you the information about the computers, and there's a hell of a lot of information at the top up here, but I'm not going to go through over this because this is just an overview just to show you what the system is like. And then we have the log as well, which was we'd expect. I haven't been running it that long. So we have no events in the log. The account, and you can add in a new administrator. So we have some devices, we have two accounts at the moment, the account that we made manually, and we have one which is the cloud administrator, uh, which we can log in remotely. Go ahead now, the main part, we go ahead and have a look at the settings. Down here you have the site configuration and some of the services that are available on here. So we have auto failover, alerts, remote logging, advanced features. We then have the device account. So if you want to update that, that's just down here. We then have the wired connections. So you have the internet and the LAN. So the internet, as I mentioned to you earlier, you have the SFP WAN, WAN and WAN slash LAN one. That is a bit of a mouthful, but you have the idea that you can actually set up three different WANs on here as well, which is quite good. Down here is where you would set up your dynamic IPs or your static IPs, wherever you want, you can set them across. The only thing I haven't noticed on here is Still to this date, they don't have multiple WAN IPs that you can use on here, which is a bit of a bit annoying, but um, Ubiquiti had that for quite a while and they've just rectified that recently where you can have multiple WAN IPs. So you have the load balancing options, so you can balance between two internet connections if you do have them. And then the other part is the LAN where you can create multiple networks. So this is where you can segregate out your IoT devices, uh, you can have different Wi-Fi for your kids, so you can have parental controls on there, and you get that created just here. We then have the wireless networks where you can go ahead and create your SSIDs, so we can go ahead and create an inside wire, for example, 
Uh, WPA, you have 2.4 gigahertz and 5, so you can have that. You have the guest network available, so you can go ahead and create a guest portal, so you can give guest access. You can go ahead and set up a schedule on here, so you can get your timing. So you can, again, if you have a kid's Wi-Fi, for example, you can go ahead and just give them time at a specific point. Uh, we'll go ahead and click apply on here and just get that created so that's going to go off and provision now we have the network security so we have there's three different layers of security you could have on here in terms of the access control list it's quite easy and simple to do in terms of creating firewall rules creating the rule is quite simple you just type in the name you permit or deny you choose the protocol and then you go from network or ip group or port to another IP group or port. Now I don't have a secondary network connection up but you could see network to network and then this could be your IoT devices. We then move on to URL filtering where we have a look and you can create some rules here to do some deny or permits on specific URLs. So you can go ahead and choose the type of network, permit or deploy again or IP group. So if you want a specific IP you can do that. Uh, the network that you want to apply it to and the network URL. So for example, if we just choose to do facebook.com, uh, we can go ahead and block that. So let's go to Facebook and click apply. And then that will go ahead and you can see that denies Facebook. And then we have the transmission area. So we can have a look at the routing and the NAT control and bandwidth. Uh, VPN, we can go ahead and create a VPN policies just here. We have the profiles that we mentioned earlier. So you can create time limits on how long they can use the network for, which you can set up just here. We then can create groups to make it easier to apply the firewall rules to. And then we have the bandwidth limits that, that we also spoke about as well, where you can go ahead and set a limit to how much data they can use. Under authentication, you have the portal. So you can go ahead and create your guest portal from here and you can have multiple of them if you need to. And then we have the more technical advanced, so 802.1x, Mac-based authentication and the Radius profile as well. We then have a list of services. So DHCP reservation, dynamic DNS, you can go ahead and create that. SNMP, UPnP, SSH, reboot schedule, etc, etc. So again, that's all within here. And then we have a look at the controller itself. So we have the controller, which again, you have the name and you can give it an IP address and set all that up. You can give it a certificate, the data retention and the access config as well. So how you would access it. Cloud access, if you want the cloud access available on here. So if you didn't enable it at the start, you can go ahead and do that. And then we have the maintenance on here. So you can do your backups, restores, from here and then migration and auto backup. So just going back to what I showed you earlier, we'll go ahead down here and we'll have a look at the wired networks. We'll go to LAN. We'll go ahead and create a kids network. We want them going out of the LAN one interface. We want to go out the LAN one and we want to set this up as a VLAN. So we'll go VLAN 100. So we go ahead and give it a network ID. Uh, domain name, we don't need to do it. The DHCP range, so you can choose 192.168.100.0. 10 to 192.168.100.100. So you can choose your DHCP range that you want. And then we go to wireless network. So we're going to create a wireless network based off the back of that. So we're going to go ahead and call this uh, kids Wi Fi. Uh, we don't want to enable guests. We give it a very secure password. And then we go into advanced settings. Then we want to click on VLAN. And then we want to give it VLAN 100 because we want it to use that. So we go ahead and click apply. And now we have two different Wi-Fi options. And then I'm just gonna show you right here what it shows on the Wi-Fi options. So you can see just down here, we have the option for the inside wire, inside wire Wi-Fi network that we created and the kids Wi-Fi. So I hope you found this really useful. It's a quick overview just of the Amada system and what it looks like. If you are coming from a unified world, it is a very similar look and feel. So you wouldn't be feeling too intimidated. Maybe a few changes, but nothing major. If there are any further videos you wanna see on this, let me know down in the comments below. Remember to hit the like button and comment down below what you think of the Amada system. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.